Hey folks, it's Keith. Today I'm doing a comparison between the Yamaha WR250R and the XT250. Some of you all are looking to get a smaller bike and looking at a 250 and might be curious about what the differences are. So I brought my resident expert on the XT250, Victoria, here to talk about her bike and I'm going to say a few words about my bike and then we'll answer any questions you have in the comments below and hopefully help you guys make an informed decision about whether these bikes are right for you. Well, I'm here with Victoria. We're on a Class 4 road in Vermont. We've been having a great time riding today, both of these bikes, putting them through the paces. Victoria's been in the XT250 videos I've done, as well as the RX3 video. So, Vic, I wanted to talk to you about the XT250, what you like about it, what the strengths of it are. Absolutely. Um, we are here enjoying the great Class 4 roads of Vermont uh, with our little bikes today, and uh, very pleased that we have both the XT and the WRR out. Um, my bike performs flawlessly uh, in uh, class 4 conditions and the reason why I went with the 250 is because I'm a, a shorter rider. I have a, a 30 inch, not even, a 29 and a half inch inseam. And for me to get this bike, which I'd love to have with the WR, um, this is a 36 and a half inch seat height. That would be really out of the question for me. I'd be dangling on it, but I love so much about the WRR 250. Um, but the XT is is certainly certainly capable, uh, given given its smaller seat height. So this has a 31.9 inch seat height. Um, it's 18 horsepower out of the gate, 16 at the rear wheel. Uh, this has about 25 horsepower. So a big difference in terms of power. Uh, suspension is softer on this bike, um, not as much uh, advanced componentry suspension-wise as the WR, but it's still capable for a lighter rider. Um, my bike is also air-cooled and, uh, and carbureted, uh, where Keith's bike, the WR, is water-cooled and fuel-injected. The newer models of the XT uh, from 2013 on are fuel injected, so that's a nice plus for the newer models, uh, but otherwise the bike has remained the same. Uh, the WR has uh, a lot more in terms of suspension clearance, uh, travel uh, available to it than the XT. I think you have 12 inches of, of um, ground clearance on the WR. I have about 10 on the XT. Again, still substantial. And the travel of the forks and rear shock on the WR are substantially higher uh, than that on the XT. Uh, but both have front and rear disc, which is a wonderful thing. Um, fuel range, let's talk about that. Uh, fuel range is, uh, capacity is 2.6 gallons on the XT. That'll get me at least 150 miles. The WR has a smaller tank, and usually about 120 is pushing it. Uh, with the WR, uh, but it can go a little faster. It's got a little more powerful of an engine, so that's the trade-off. There are aftermarket tanks available for the WR, so you can expand that fuel capacity uh, where there are none for the XT, so I'm pretty much committed to my 2.6 gallon tank. Um, but outside of that, for a smaller rider, this is the natural choice. If you've got more inseam, this is the natural choice. Either way, they're both Yamahas, and the reliability is mind-blowing. I'm just about to hit 40,000 miles on the XT, and when we do, we're gonna have another video uh, to celebrate XT Momo's anniversary. Uh, he's still running strong, so um, that's about all I can come up with. Uh, so Keith, I'll hand it to you to uh, tell us about what you like about your bike. Go. So I've had my WR for a little over two years now. It's only got 5,500 miles on it. I absolutely love it and I can't imagine not having it. It just goes wherever I need it to go. I've come from bigger bikes and the capacity of this bike really astounds me and it's much greater than what my skill level is. Um, a great, a fantastic rider with this bike could really have an incredible amount of fun. But I'm having a, a lot of fun just riding around these class 4 roads and just dirt roads around Vermont where I live. Um, did I really need all the capacity of the WR versus the XT? Probably not. Um, one thing is really obvious to me today following Victoria is a good rider on a bike like this can surpass a beginner or me mediocre middle level rider on something like this. It's really about the skill level. This bike will really take you wherever you want to go. As far as the roads, the capacity, I find that these bikes are pretty equal. 
if you had the extra money, you wanted to step up to a water-cooled engine, fuel-injected, more modern, more uh, capacity with suspension, and you have the inseam to handle it, uh, I think the WR is a fantastic choice. Now the big difference probably most people are asking is, is it worth the $2,000 difference? This bike is about $7,300 I think is what I spent, spent on it. Um, is it worth the $2,000? For me it is because it does everything I needed to do. I don't have to worry about whether I need to grow into it or, or uh, upgrade it. But I found that the XT, Victoria's got 40,000 miles on it. This bike can last you a really long time too. So I think it's really just a matter of personal preference. Do you mind spending the extra money for the suspension capacity and can you handle the ground clearance of the bike? If you have questions about those, I think you'd be perfectly happy with the XT because I've been following Victoria all day. I can't keep up with her. This bike is very, very capable right out of the box. So if you've got any questions at all about either bike, drop them in the comments below. Victoria and I will monitor that and answer the questions the best we can. Thanks again for watching and for all the support in the channel and we'll see you out on the road.